Um, so that's that's cool, I think. Um, and you can then, of course, um, you could change the space so that it only goes through channels one and two, which is basically how we've got it set up here. So um, we do that. Uh, one and two are now going to up to channels one and two, and I've kind of compressed the space so that it only goes to those. If I move it across the space, you will see from looking at the master object that it's now being sent to the other speakers. So, so that's working as it should. Um, grain length, uh, you can change that, but these, these things are fairly obvious. Um, there's the plode manual, um, so you plode, just clicking the plode button will um, give you that kind of constant grain, granulation. If you click on plode manual, then intergrain length becomes irrelevant because you can then kind of make gestures by kind of doing a, a scrub within this manual trigger space which might be might be useful and um, hits uh, refers to the number of grains triggered simultaneously so if we wanted something that was more uh, dynamic over all speakers so you'll notice that you know if I, if I just click once here then it will only be uh, sent to a certain number of speakers and um, if I Go to uh, seven. This is irritating me. Go away. I don't know why it's still flickering. Um, uh, so if I say I want uh, seven or say ten grains to be triggered triggered at once, then I click on here, and uh, and you, well, you should have heard it's a little bit louder, and of course it's still only being sent to the same amount of space because I haven't increased this yet. But now that will send the grains and you know just do a single. Um, gesture or whatever over the the entire space, even when I just click once with the mouse. Um, another thing that might be useful in this, I'm going to load another sound. Oh, incidentally, you can uh, do a quick load by uh, dragging a, um, whatever sound you want to the sound loader uh, button, drop it, and the, the sound is loaded. So the whole of the sound, or as much of the sound as um, Plode can accommodate, will be uh, will be loaded straight in. Um, so in this case, I've got a, a pitched sound, and um, as usual with uh, transposition, oh sorry, with uh, granulation. If you try and transpose that, let's see where we get. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so we could make that a bit more of a smooth. Ah, yes, that's the other thing. Uh, so you hear that it's kind of got an attack now. Um, we can look at the grain envelopes. And uh, we have a, a means by which we can make that all of the grain envelopes smoother, like that. Um, and we have a means of uh, applying some EQ to that, which I won't do now, but you can explore. Go back to this. Um, I'm going to choose a smaller se section of that. Uh, increase the um, speed at which grains are being triggered. Oh, remember hits are on, so I'll reduce that a little bit. And I'm going to, because we can't really hear it, I'm going to compress this space. So, whoops, sorry, no, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, it is. Uh, the space I meant to compress just to the first two channels so you can hear it. So you can get, um, obviously with a bit of manipulation, you can get some fairly smooth, smooth results from that. We could, in fact, uh, just choose a very, um, oops, a very small... section for it to Oops. oh it's because I keep changing grain length that's why apologies I meant to change into grain length and I wanted to increase grain sorry there you go that's what I wanted to do I wanted to increase grain length and I wanted to decrease into grain length and you want to make a smoother sound sorry it's because this was hidden and I got confused um yeah, so that works. Um, but you know, with granulation, if you try and do transposition on that, you get a fairly um, characteristic granular transposition, which is okay, but it's not really what I want, uh, or it might not be what I want. So an alternative is to do diatonic, which I did with clatter, and that enables you to do it by the octave and make pretty, pretty sounds. 
so uh, that might be a, that might be preferable. There's also a detune function on there as well, which might be better for for more uh, more specifically uh, tuned things if you want to detune. So that is that. I think that's probably all I wanted to show you. So that is Enchan. Um, I think for people wanting to do multi-channel work, it could be quite useful. Once again, please bear in mind that it is in alpha dash beta mode. So for the most part, the functionality works. Ah, that's the other thing. One more thing to say. You can save the state of some of these, and this is where the bugginess really is, is that I haven't uh, I haven't put it onto everything yet. So um, uh, you have, as I said earlier, you have these presets at the top of the screen, um, which you can um, click on and it will save the state of your patch. So if I have, um, uh, if I shift and click on one of these and then change the amplitude, for example, I click it back and it should go back to where it was. Yes, good. Um, what I haven't used is the patter storage um, means of saving those those presets for if you uh, close your file and you want to reopen it in the same state it was. So um, an alternative is to uh, if you press Control and Alt, then it comes up with a little preset on load, which means that if you have saved a preset you can specify one of those presets to to load when you reload the patch. So if I were to now close the patch and reopen it should, it should remember that preset and open it. Um, if it doesn't, just let me know because uh, yeah, as I say, it's there are a couple of things which don't work quite as they should yet. Um, but um, well, anyway, see how you get on with it if you're interested at all. And if you got this far with the video, then you've been listening for 35 minutes. Well done, you.